Hi, I'm Candy Grisham. I'm the author of Dresden Quilt Blocks Reimagined with CNT Publishing. Today I'm going to show you how to make a couple of the basic blocks, but along the way I'm going to show you lots of my tips and tricks that I've learned that you can adapt with the Dresdens or any of your sewing. Two of the basic Dresden blocks are the ones that have the straight edges and the pointed edges that you can see some behind me. To do the straight edges, you start with two strips of fabric your desired size. You put them right sides together, and then you're going to cut with the 18 degree Dresden wedge. When you cut these, you want to keep them all in a nice stack with the same fabric on the top. This makes your sewing a lot easier. As you sew them, the smart thing to do is to chain piece them, meaning that you just keep feeding these through the sewing machine without breaking your thread in between each block. That gives you this nice unit with everything attached. One of my special tips and things I love to use is some kind of a seam ripper stand. This is a homemade one with just a little two inch block of wood and a standard seam ripper. But if you have this right next to you after you chain piece, you can just come right along and clip apart all of your pieces. And you save your hands, you save thread. It's also a lot more efficient as you go. The seam ripper is always available then to you as well. So after you've sewn your 10 pairs, you need 20 wedges for each block. You're going to press those seams open. I like to use some kind of a pressing ham. This again is another homemade one. It's made from a banister rail cut into sections. It's pine, it's unfinished. And I simply lay the seam line right on top and press. And that gives me a nice crisp open seam with no seam allowances showing along the way. So I've finished sewing all of my pairs and now I have a circle with straight edges. All of my seams are pressed open. And you might say, what's that in the middle? That's a little piece of fusible interfacing that I use to stabilize these centers. The fusible part or the bumpy part goes towards the front of your block. That way, when you go to put your centers on, it will stick a little bit to your center and help you to sew that down. Now the centers I make using just a couple layers of freezer paper with the fabric pushed in or pulled in around it with a basting stitch. And then that comes out. And another tip along the way is to take a piece of freezer paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, cut out with the size of the center you're using in the middle. And I've marked the lines on here to show you where the seam lines match up on my block. If I do them at north, south, east, and west, right where they meet in the middle, I can put that center, and it's perfectly centered every single time. It saves you a lot of trouble and ripping. After your center is on, you need to finish the block. In order to finish these blocks, I use a fusible interfacing the same way, so it's only fusible on one side. I rough cut out a circular shape, pin it to my block, with the fusible to the right side of my block. Pin it well and stitch a quarter inch seam all the way around the outside. Trim that interfacing away, turn it, and there's my finished block. It's all ready to go onto the quilt. It's got a little bit of the fusible interfacing on the back, which has created a facing. And it's sticky enough that when you take this and iron it to your surface, it'll stay in place long enough for you to sew that down. So that's finishing the round edge or the straight edge plates. The other plates that I like to do are the pointed plates. These are very popular. Again, it's 20 wedges. Each time it's 20 wedges. But these, you're gonna finish the edge of each wedge before you sew them all together. When you do this, you've cut your wedges and you're gonna take each wedge and you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam right across the top with it folded in half lengthwise. 
You can chain piece these just like we did the other one. I've cut a little bit of extra out of the top of that wedge of that seam just to reduce the bulk. And I'm going to finger press that seam open and turn this using my friendly little poker to turn that seam out. When you turn these, you need to make sure that the fold lines are centered. Otherwise, your points will be off on your whole bluff. This is just a simple piece of cardstock with a 45 degree line drawn from the corner. If you insert that into your point, line up the seam line on that line and press, every one of your folds will be perfectly symmetrical. After you've finished pressing all of your points, you're gonna sew them together again as pairs. When you start to sew, I line up the folds. I start about a quarter of an inch down from the fold and back stitch and then do the seam all the way down. That locks this top together and you won't get any little threads hanging out of there. Again, these are pressed open. All the way around, you need 20 wedges to finish. When your block is finished, you've got all your seams pressed open. You're stabilized with a little bit of stable, uh, interfacing, fusible interfacing. And you can add your center with the centering placement and you're finished. Your block is done and ready to applique to your quilt. So these are two of the basic edges. There's several more in the book. The book also goes into some more complicated type of blocks that are pieced and have a lot more going on in them, but they all can have these same kind of edges no matter what you do. So I hope you have a lot of fun and make lots of plates. Thank you.